you filmed any of the new season yet? Your part? Oh yes, I did. I I, I did a day, and then I I got a bunch. I got a bunch to do next week. Yep, yep, yeah. It's 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 fun. It's great. I'm having a blast. I love my material. Um, Michael Patrick King writes so brilliantly, and 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 and, and all the writers. It's it's great. It, um, it's going to be a good season. It's going to be fun. So yeah, and I I'm just glad to be back. I'm the luckiest boy in the world. <clears throat> you know, I'm, it came back. I'm not lucky that they called me because it came back because they should call me. Uh, but I'm lucky that I'm part of this phenomenon for years. Are you shocked that it came back? I don't know. I mean, when we didn't do the third movie, I thought, I thought, no, I thought it was over. But um, so, yeah, I was shocked, but I was just like elated. Look, nothing, you know, there's so many things that don't work out, especially in my career. There's so many things that have fallen through, fallen through. You know, it's been not easy, but uh, this was just, this came through. And at a good time in my third, my third act. I'm just as happy as you are that it came back, you know. What do you say, you know, to all like the naysayers? You know, like, obviously you're aware of all like the criticism when this show came out. I read like, everything. You I do? read everything. Oh, I certainly do. I flood myself. But luckily, you know, I would say personally and selfishly for me, it's been great. You know, I mean, so, but I think, look, I mean, a lot of people have their things about it. And, but, you know, that's the good thing. Everyone's talking about it. And it was one of the highest watched shows in HBO Max history. So, you know, go ahead, say what you want to say. Gather around the water cooler, talk, bitch complain love and that's what it's all about and it people were so married to this series and these movies that they have their opinion you know they they and they have the right to their opinion but they certainly continue to watch it that's the thing at the end i think it's a strange consumer these days like a lot of people are just I don't even know if hate watching is the right world, but it's not just, it's so many things and people are so angry about what they're watching, but they can't turn away. But they can't turn away. Yeah. 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 It's true. But you know, it's, but hate watching. I mean, if I really hate something, I'm not going to watch it. So, you know, I agree with you. I mean, it's the same thing I say to my, you know, Mm. you people, you know, the online trolls, I'm like, but you listen to me every day. So, you know, that's right. There you so, go. So, yeah, there you go. Are there any <clears throat> secrets that you would like to reveal? No, here? no, David. David. I don't think so. You know, uh, here's one. David is my confirmation name. It's a good name. That? It is a great, it's one of my favorite names, you know. It's my, it's, it, I, I don't know if you are watching Turner Classic Movies, but <clears throat> I, 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 I'm obsessed with that station. I have it on 24 7. And last October, I did every Sunday with Ben Mankiewicz, my bromance, and we presented two horror movies. And this year we're back every Monday night. It's it's the thing that I live for more than any. I mean, I love the mess singer. I love him just like that. But Turner Classic Movies is my game. And I worm my way in there like E. Harrington. And I, you know, I got to do that month-long spotlight last year. And I'm doing it again. And I'm doing more next year. I I, I love it. And we showed Possessed two Mondays ago with, with um, Joan Crawford. And she's obsessed with the man named David. And she's a schizophrenic and she's walking around the streets at the beginning and no makeup. And she's just going, you know, days. And she's like going, I'm looking for David. Are you David? And the bus stops and the door opens. She goes, is David on this bus? No, ma'am, he's not. Where's David? It's so David is my favorite name. <laughs> and of course, the statue of David. Well, listen, I didn't think you wanted to reveal any secrets here, but you know, you can't no, uh, blame you. a girl for trying. Uh, you, uh, you should absolutely ask, you know. And I yes. said, I just, I, I swerved off an exit to something I really wanted to talk about. <laughs> Turner Classic Movies, The Mass Singer. Turner Classic Movies, yeah. It's all, it's all good stuff. Well, I mean, like you said, you know, you've been, you say like disappointment, like you've, you know, and look, it's a tough business, right? Oh God. When you talk about things that you almost got or that you were in the mix for, is this true? Because I read this somewhere. Were you in the mix for Jack McFarlane on Will and Grace? Like, did you ever? I auditioned for it, but I did. I didn't get it, and I went to college with uh, with Max Luchnick, and he he didn't give me the job. But who could be better than Sean Hayes? Nobody. So I'm, I got what I was supposed to get, and um, you know, I don't think I was in the mix for it. I don't know how far I went for it. I know I was. I I was seen twice, 
But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But, you know, it's a great show. I watched it and I love watched it every week. Not hate watched it. Love watched it. But listen, it was the same time as Sex in the City. So like you said, you might not have been Anthony. You might, I mean, it was pretty much the same time. It was. Yeah, it was. It was. It's true. Why, you know, I followed your career, like, you know, it's not just about sex in the city, like Steam Pipe Alley and like yep. a little shout out to Men in Trees. I had the pleasure of having Anne Hage on this podcast. Yeah, I, I mean, know. Uh, working with her, she was beautiful to work with, by the way. I had a great time with her. She was lovely to me. And that was a good experience, except for the fact that it was, you know, I had to fly to Vancouver every week. But, uh, you know, it's and not that I, I love Vancouver. I just, you know, I'm in New York and it's, you know, it's like going to. Hawaii, a Bora Bora, it's a long flight. Um, but I had a good time with that show. I really, John, John, John Amos, who I loved. Oh God, it was just really, it was lovely. It was a great show. What do you attribute like the, the like just sex in the city? Like, you know, the fact that now we have a second incarnation, like what do you think, you know, what this show did for like LGBTQ? We had two main gay characters like in the nineties yeah. that was, yeah. Big. you know, big fashion and, new york yeah i mean that's it, it was way ahead of its time and what it did for women and and their sexuality and their sexual life you know being unashamed of it and, and and you know wanting what they want and going after what they get and all their disappointments in new york city was like they said you know it's always been the fifth character you know and it it uh i'll tell you what it did i live like eight blocks from the meatpacking district and the meatpacking district when i got there was the meatpacking district it was you know they were slaughtering cows and slicing you know they were they were it was a butcher it was a big you know area for for, for butchering animals to eat and uh now because they were you know people had uh, they would go down to the meat camp. They filmed a lot of the meat packing district. We, there was an apartment there, and I forget who had the apartment there. But anyway, it that accelerated the the growth. That I think Sex and the City accelerated the growth of the meat packing district. It became this go to place, the Soho House, and you know, and Pastis, and you know, I go go down there all the time, except on weekends when drunk women chase me. And now, what it costs to live there? So you know. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah all those buildings. How do you, just from being friends with her and working with her, how do you think like just from the nineties to today, like SJP has changed like as an actress, as a, a human? Well, like I thought she, I think she was always a great actress and she's always been so kind. And I, you know, socialized with her and her husband, who I also adore, Matthew, who's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. And, uh, but 